Today we're going to look at integrating logarithms. When we talk about logarithms, we have things that look like the integral of 1 over x dx or the integral of dx over x. We cannot use the power rule where n would be negative 1 as it would give us x to the 0 over 0, which we all know is undefined. So this is why in the power rule it works for any n except for negative 1. So this is a special case, but what we want to do is remember that integration is undoing differentiation. And if we remember things about logarithms, we have the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And this means that the integral of 1 over x dx is ln of the absolute value of x plus c. Now we need the absolute value of x because we cannot take the logarithm of something that's negative. So over in our integration, x could be negative, but when we bring it over, we need to remember to have the absolute value because ln of a negative doesn't make sense. It's impossible to do. So we're going to start with an example with the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx. This is going to be a really nice, easy u substitution. What we do is we let u be the denominator. So in our case, the denominator is x plus 1. And when we differentiate, we get du is dx. And when we substitute, the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx becomes the integral of 1 over u du. And when we integrate, we get the, the ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And then we substitute back in what u is, and we get ln of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus your favorite constant. So let's look at another example. We've got the integral of 3 over 4 minus 2x dx. So we're going to need another u substitution. And again, we let u equal 4 minus 2x, which is the denominator. When we differentiate, we get du equals negative 2 dx. So don't forget about the negative. So our integral then becomes, after u substitution, negative 3 halves the integral of 1 over u du. So we're dividing by that negative 2. We have the original 3, so that's where the negative 3 halves is coming from. Then we integrate, and we get negative 3 halves ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And then we bring back in what u is. So negative 3 halves the ln of the absolute value of 4 minus 2x plus c. For our next example, we're going to look at the integral of x dx over x squared plus 5. So you want to have a u substitution, we're going to let u be the denominator. So u is x squared plus 5, which means du is 2x dx. And when we do the substitution, we divide both sides by 2, so we get 1 half the integral of du divided by u, which is 1 half ln of absolute value of u plus c. And then again, we plug back in what u is. So we have 1 half ln of the absolute value of x squared plus 5. Notice that you wouldn't actually need the absolute value in this case, because x squared plus 5 is already always positive. But it doesn't hurt to leave it in there. The next case we're going to look at is the integral of cosine x over sine x dx. Again, we let u be the denominator. So u is sine x which makes du equal to cosine x dx. So when we do our u substitution, we get the integral of du over u, which again is ln of the absolute value of u plus c, which then becomes ln of the absolute value of sine x plus c. Now we've got the integral of e to the 2x over 1 plus 4e to the 2x dx. So this one looks a little bit more complicated, but we'll see what happens. So again, we let u be the denominator, 1 plus 4e to the 2x. And when we differentiate, we get 8e to the 2x dx. So don't forget that you have to multiply the equation by the derivative of your exponent, which in this case is 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. So we have to divide by that 8, so we get 1 8, 1 8th the integral of du over u 
which again is 1 over 8 ln of the absolute value of u plus c. Plug back in what u is. So 1 over 8 ln of 1 plus 4 e to the 2x in absolute value plus c. And again, in actuality, you don't need the absolute value because 1 plus 4 e to the 2x is always positive. For our last example, we're going to look at a definite integral. So the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared theta over 1 plus tangent theta d theta. So again, we let u equal the denominator, 1 plus tangent theta. The derivative would then be secant squared theta d theta, which, as it just so happens, is our numerator. So again, we get the integral of du over u, which gives us ln of the absolute value of u, which is ln of the absolute value of 1 plus tangent theta, and we're evaluating this from 0 to pi over 4. If I plug in pi over 4, I'm looking at tangent of pi over 4, which is 1, so ln of 1 plus 1, which is 2, so ln of 2, and then when I plug in 0, Tangent of 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, so I get ln of 1. So I'm looking at ln of 2 minus ln of 1, but ln of 1 is 0, so we get just ln of 2. We'll leave it as that, that is actually equal to ln of 2. Do not plug it into your calculator and come up with an approximation. We want that equals there. So it's ln of 2, period, done, no calculator needed. So there you have it. Whenever you are integrating fractions, you want to look for, is the derivative of the bottom equal to the top, possibly with a different coefficient? And if that's the case, you're always going to end up with a logarithm as your answer. So try out the homework. Uh, if you have any questions, send me an email, and good luck.